Okay, good evening everybody and uh, welcome to the Merrimack Parks and Recreation meeting for September 18th, 2024. It is 7.02. <laughs> I pre I Excuse me, I've been corrected. It is 7 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> so, and we're going to go ahead and begin the meeting. Um, we're going to start tonight with uh, an Eagle Scout project that we have. Uh, Peyton Connolly is coming in, and he is uh, going to explain to us the project that he's going to build for the Merrimack Dog Park in, at Wasserman. I uh, did I not just say Peyton Connolly? Oh, would you guys like to be introduced? <laughs> I'll introduce everybody else when Peyton's finished. Sounds good. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> Peyton, it's all yours. Press the button to turn on your mic there. Yep, light up. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, here to present to you my Eagle Scout Service Project, Canine Shade Shelter at Wasserman Park. Uh, I'm with Troop 401. Just want to start off by saying a little bit about myself. I've lived in Merrimack my entire life. I'm a senior at Merrimack High School. I'm a member of the National Honor Society and the lacrosse team. In addition to attending Merrimack High School, I also attend the Career and Technical Education Program at Alvern High School and the Welding and Fabrication Program. Upon graduating, I plan on attending uh, trade school to pursue a career in the welding industry. I've been Involved in Scouts since I was in kindergarten. I'm a Boy Scout with Troop 401, which meets at St. James Church. I'm at the last step of my scouting journey, preparing to complete my service project and achieving my Eagle Scout rank. My project is going to be a dog at the dog park at Wasserman Park. The dog park at Wasserman Park is an open concept dog park for the community to enjoy with their canine companions. Despite a large variety of the trees surrounding the area, the dog park remains relatively open to direct sunlight depending on the time of day. The sun can beat down on the dogs and their owners that are trying to enjoy some outdoor fun. The picture on the left is what you see when you first arrive to the dog park. And then the picture on the right is the picture er, is of the large dog section. The shade shelter that I'll be building will be an 8 foot by 10 foot covered structure with a shingled roof that is supported by pillars. This will provide a shaded area where dogs and their owners can cool off on hot days. It will be built off to the side in the middle of the dog, large dog area so that dogs have plenty of room to run around and play. And then the pictures provided below it shows that it's going to be against the fence. Uh, that divides the large dog and the small dog area. This is a sample shade shelter. It's going to basically look like that, just without all of the uh, lattice on top, and it's not going to be. That's not to spec. The benefits of this project is going to be protection from the sun. Both humans and dogs can be affected by direct exposure to the sun. This can result in heat exhaustion or heat stroke. The shade shelter provides a place for dogs and their owners to cool off. It provides a place for their owners to sit comfortably out of the sun while their dogs run around and play. It allows dogs to get exercise without their owners sweltering in the sun. If the owners can sit comfortably in the shade, they're more likely to stay at the park longer. Having a place for the shade helps to reduce exposure to harmful UV rays, which can cause skin cancer in both humans and dogs. And it also provides a social benefit since it provides a welcoming feel to the dog park so that people can socialize with their dogs while their dogs play and socialize with other dogs. A shade shelter offers health and safety benefits as well as social advantages promoting, promoting an area that brings enjoyment to the community members and their pets. The timeline for my project is I started talking to Mr. Kasparius at the beginning of August, uh, no, July uh, to inquire anything about the Parks and Rec Department for ideas for a service project. Me and Mr. Kasparius went back and forth talking about what ideas 
there were and what was going to interest me. I decided to take on the role of doing a uh, shade shelter for the dog park because I personally have a dog and I take my dog there a lot. Um, I met on, at the beginning of August, I met with my former scout leader, Mr. Johnson, to plan and draw up my blueprint for the shade shelter to determine the materials that I was going to need. And then I, the next day I went to Home Depot to price out all the materials and get my proposal completed. Then I met with Mr. Kasparius to review my proposal and discussed presentations and discussed pr presenting to the Parks and Rec Committee and Town Council. And then skip ahead. And then I just, um, tonight, connect, uh, presenting to the Parks and Rec Committee. And then next week I plan on presenting to the Eagle Board and then the Town Council if everything goes to plan. And then um, I'm going to contact the St. James Church to reserve the Fellowship Hall for the fundraiser and contact the DPW to schedule the day for the auger to dig the holes for the pillars. I'm going to sell uh, tickets and collect donations for my spaghetti supper fundraiser on October 5th and 6th. Um, uh, and then ongoing planning, emails, and getting everything all situated before the time for the actual build. And then I plan for my build to be the weekend of November 2nd and 3rd to just get everything built. And and then I'm going to present it to Mr. Kasparius and provide a written report after that for my project after the outcome to present to the Eagle Board. The process is going to be wanting me wanting to get six to eight people to help me out with this building process, I'm going to recruit my fellow scouts, leaders, friends, and family. I'm going to finalize the materials, supplies, and tools that I'm going to need. I'm going to contact the DPW to schedule the day for the auger to dig the holes for the pillars. I'm going to measure out the area of the dog park and make sure the DPW will dig the holes with the auger so that it is ready for the day of the build. I'm going to hold a fundraiser, purchase all the materials that I'm needing, and finalize plans, review with those assisting, delegate, and supervise the construction of the shade shelter. Getting enough people to work with my, or my, my biggest concerns are getting enough people to help with uh, my spaghetti supper and to complete the construction of the shade shelter. I think the most difficult part is gonna be leading this pro project instead of uh, doing it because I'm very hands-on and like actually working on things and it's going to be difficult for me to guide and kind of take a step back and just tell people what I would want them to do. It's going to be hard since there's younger kids in my troop that aren't able to touch anything with um, a battery or like machinery so that that's a big safety hazard and it's going to be more of just trying to keep them busy, like run, go get me a hammer type thing. So basically just be like the runners. So trying to just keep them engaged and on task and then uh, just make sure everything with the build goes correctly and the plan. And then since the anticipated date for the build is November 2nd and 3rd and we live in an unpredictable New England, I hope that the weather cooperates so that we can complete the build as planned and it doesn't snow. Pricing, it's going to be around $550 for all of the materials with including the lumber and, and then the supplies for like paying for the spaghetti supper up front and um, paying for like food for the weekend for everybody that helps me out and tarps and refreshments and all of that. It's going to be approximately about $600. Um, pricing tools. Um, my father and Mr. Johnson have most of the tools that I'm going to need and they're letting me use all of them so I'm not going to really need to spend that much on tools per se but then um, it's, it's mostly just little things I need to purchase so that's only going to cost about $30 and then just the only other 
miscellaneous thing is just the engraved plaque for the shade shelter once it's completed. And it's going to be a total estimated cost of around $1,215. The logistics is going to be transportation of materials, supplies, tools, and helpers. I'm going to arrange to use one of my friend's trailers to transport the lumber from the store to the dog park. Um, all of the other materials that are smaller that aren't like 12 foot beams or whatever can go into me and my father's trucks. We don't mind transporting stuff. And then Mr. Johnson will bring supplies and tools that he has to let us use. And then adult helpers and my friends that have their driver's license will be able to transport themselves to the dog park. But then un younger scouts from the troop that n don't have their licenses are going to need to have their parents transport them to the dog park since I'm not able to transport anyone under BSA regulations. I'll communicate the time for arrival and pick up and so that the parents are able to transport their children to and from the dog park. Biggest safety issues are going to be uh, since power tools are being used, everyone involved needs to wear eye protection. Younger scouts are not permitted to use tools due to the risk of injury. I'll assign duties that they can safely help with. Work gloves should be worn to prevent any injuries to their hands. Since there's a need to climb ladders to be able to put on the roof to put the shingles together, I'm going to have extra precaution, going to have a ladder, going to have a spotter holding the ladder and making sure that they don't fall. Um, extra cautious that, or extra caution will be used when hammers and nails are being used and so nobody has any issues. And then I'm gonna have a first aid kit available in the event anybody gets injured. Um, action steps gonna be that I'm gonna review the blueprint to ensure that it contains everything that is needed. Meet with the manager of Home Depot to ensure that everything that I have listed down is everything that I'm going to need for my materials. Uh, identify numbers, number of helpers needed and request assistance from the scout members, leaders, friends and family. Purchase all of the materials. I'm going to gather all of the supplies, tools and equipment. Devise a duty roster so everybody knows what their task is when they arrive. I'm going to transport all the materials and etc. to the dog park. I'm going to hold a team meeting to discuss the plan for the day to assign duties so everybody knows their task. I'm going to review the blueprint. I'm going to set up the equipment that's needed, arrange all the materials and supplies, and closely monitor the process of the build, and make sure make changes to the duty roster as needed to ensure that everything is running smoothly in the building process. Project phase uh, Basically, I already touched on upon every one of these topics just for um, my Eagle um, pamphlet. They require you have to have a project phase listed out, so I'll just skip that. And then fundraising, I'm going to talk to local businesses for donations. I'm going to sell tickets in advance for the spaghetti supper and collect donations outside of tractor supply on... October 5th and 6th, as anticipated. And then I'm going to hang flyers for the spaghetti dinner and fundraiser at local businesses and post notice on social media. I'm going to host the spaghetti supper and fundraiser at uh, St. James Church on October 12th. And donations from family and friends and continue to update social media. Here's what my pamphlet's going to look like. Thank you. And then here's um, me and J Mr. Johnson sat down and created a blueprint. This is th the picture on the left is a side view of it. So I'm going to have a pillar running across the middle of it for uh, structure support. And also I'm going to hang a couple of hooks on it so that people can put their dog leashes there while they don't, so they don't have to hold on to them. And then I'm going to have the concrete footings 30 inches down into the ground to meet regulation. And then the front is going to be 10 feet high, and then the back is going to be 8 feet high, so it has a sloped pitch, so then don't have to worry about um, any snow in the winter having to shovel it. These are pictures of the dog park before, without the shade shelter.
and then this is a bird's eye view of the dog park and the red point is where I'm gonna have the shade shelter be put yeah again right there and then this is that example photo and then thank you again for the opportunity to, for me to give back to my community okay this was a that was a fantastic presentation thank you. and I have to admit I'm extremely excited to see this project um, because you are spot on it is so hot and parents suffer and, and it's kind of funny to watch 20 people trying to uh, crowd around the single tree out there that has some kind of leaves in the summertime um, and the pools just don't quite cut it mm -hmm. so um, this was a wonderful idea and thank you very much for thinking about it and you've gone through everything so in so much detail um, yeah this is fantastic thank you anyone else Mackenzie oh Lori go ahead go ahead <laughs> I was just going to say it was also a very organized, excellent presentation. Thank you. Um, you're actually building lifetime skills of leadership, critical thinking, innovation, community service, and perseverance. So congratulations thank and you. thank you. And I too would like just to add on to what those two also said. Thank you so much. There's so much thought and detail and information that's gone into this. Um, and please put me down to help with the October 12th spaghetti dinner. I'm more than happy to attend and help out. Thank you. You're welcome. Phil? I'd like to suggest you go to the Merrimack Lions Club. I'm the treasurer of the Merrimack Lions Club. She would be happy to contribute to your, your uh, coffers. I don't know, $1,200 doesn't sound like a lot, but it might be a lot after a spaghetti supper. It gets a couple hundred bucks. So send me an email and we'll see what we can help you out there. Okay, appreciate it. Appreciate We'd love it. to. Yeah. Nice. Anyone else? I just have to say I'm so proud of you. That's all. Thank you. It's awesome. Regardless of how this turns out, the work you've put into it is great. Thank you. Of course. Heather? I also like to say thank you very much on behalf of the people from the dog park. They're going to be very excited that this is, is going to happen. We've been talking about it for such a long time. So um, I was just curious if you were going to have flyers put up at I, the dog park. and Yeah, I was planning on hanging a laminated one so it doesn't get ruined from the rain. Okay, because I can try to collect up um, some donations there and, and see if people will be available on that day to help out as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Matt, we have access to that um, the kiosk, yeah. kiosk on the left-hand side. So we have a kiosk on the left-hand side of the dog park where you can put one of the flyers in there as well. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Anywhere to advertise is, is good. And the lawn yeah. signs, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like we have 50,000 of them out there until the election's over. Yeah. A lawn sign helps too because you could just stick that right in the ground and those are usually really good. Okay. Did anyone else have anything? Peyton, do you have a way for people to reach out to you? Is that in the packet? Uh, I don't think I had that in the packet. but Yeah, I, I didn't in the packet, but I can I can write that down. That yeah, if you have that, that, that would be okay. fantastic. I yeah. Have this okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tracy, I have just one. Yeah, Matt, if you don't mind, share yeah. with the yeah. Parks and Rec Committee. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Right. Peyton, if you do decide to get signs made, uh, rec I recently purchased some for MYA, and we used paper, paper graphics down by the YMCA, so I would recommend it if okay. you do decide you want signs. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. They've been a very good community supporter for okay. a lot of things, too. So. I'm going to just mention one little thing because I know you're going to be presenting to town council next week. Yep. And there's one little thing that pointed, stuck out to me. You said something about you were going to be selling tickets on the 10th or the, excuse me, on October 5th and 6th. Yep. But in your presentation, it says October 5th and 3rd. Yeah, I, I corrected okay. that on the, uh, the updated version that I was okay. uh, trying to go over before I came here. But he had, I, I emailed him the one last week. Okay. I just wanted to point yeah. that out. Just yeah, I'll just clean make sure and, to get the pretty. updated coffee. All right. So, are is there any other discussion? Are we ready to vote? Yeah. Do I have a motion? And I'll make a second. Okay. All in favor? All right. 
motion has passed so we will let town council know that that's passed and uh, my understanding is you're going to be set up for the meeting for next thursday yep thursday. yep so okay yeah. so um so i'll send them if if you want to email me the updated packet and then also the flyer i can laminate it and put it in the kiosk up there um at the dog park um and then we'll post it on our social media too and kind of hit it a couple of times before your event so that you get some added um okay. and the dog park page too the dog park we'll page, get yeah. we'll get it on the dog park page they're going to be so excited and they'll be asking <laughs> heather questions and bugging her for the next few hey, weeks have you, have you contacted like pets choice or the, the dog uh, pet stores around town because they would love to i haven't yet it. and this is an excellent i mean you'll you'll go in there they have pets so okay yeah so Pets Choice is actually one of the direct donators to the dog park um, for a lot of different things. And um, there, Teresa is the owner. Uh, she'd love to hear about your project and what you're doing because I'm sure she's heard all of us complaining about how hot it is out there. So thank you very much, Peyton. And uh, Mom and Dad, you've got to be so proud. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so yeah, we're good to go. And I will get you Lori Halverson's email, who she's from the DPW operations manager. So I will send that to you tomorrow um, about when we get ready to build and uh, digging the holes and that okay. stuff. All right, perfect. Yep. And remind me about this when we get into the dog park thing and the cleanup that's going to take place. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If I could, I would do that. Um, why don't we restart and say, okay, let's make some introductions. Um, huh? Yes, actually. Uh, we, we'd like to have her come up and speak. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, my name is Tracy McGraw. I am the chairperson and a little scatterbrained tonight, sorry. And I'm Rick Rainier, and I'm here um, representing the Merrimack Youth Association. And also vice chair. Josh Towns, committee member. Maureen Hall, senior citizen representative. Lori Rothhouse, school board representative. And I'm Mackenzie Murphy, I'm the town council representative. Bill Parzuski, board uh, member, committee member, sorry. Matt Kasparis, director of Parks and Recreation. Heather Fairbanks, uh, committee member. All right, all right. Thank you very much, and I'm sorry, guys, that we did that. Um, all right, so we have for tonight. Park reviews first. Uh, yeah. So annual park reviews, I'm going to leave that one to Matt to tell us where we're going, what we're doing, and when he needs it done by. Yes. All right. Okay. So we try to do this every year, and it usually more is like every two or three years before we, we get around to it. But what I'm looking for is to kind of divvy up the main parks in town and just have you go take a look sometime between now and our October meeting. And what we're looking for is maintenance issues, vandalism, um, confusing signage signs that are missing um future improvement ideas you know like shade in the dog park you know um new amenities better access you know any of those kind of things and then we'll get back when we come back in october we'll just kind of report back as a group and just take notes of you know doesn't have to be a big 10 page report just general thoughts and impressions sometimes you know i get hyper focused around Wasserman Park because that's where 90% of our stuff takes place um, and I don't always get out and about you know like I think the last it was it's probably been and I'll, I'll use Depot Street boat ramp for an example I think I I get there maybe once or twice a year at most and I just because I'm spread too thick you know so um, and sometimes I'm not thinking about those issues when I am at those places because I'm there for a different purpose you know so what I want to do is just kind of again list out kind of the main sites in town um i'll read through the list of what we have and then if you kind of if somebody wants if you want each one to kind of take one or two and then whoever's not here i'll send the i'll email it out as well and say hey we're looking for somebody for these sites so obviously we have uh abby griffin park bishop field reeds ferry tordoski fields 
Twin Bridge Park, which is also Bice Field and the MYA facility. Veterans Park, both the main entrance and the east entrance. Uh, Wasserman Park, uh, Watson Park, and Weston Park. Um, I kind of purposely left O'Gara Drive only because it's not technically our land, it's the schools. So, and that's a part of a bigger conversation that we still need to have with the council at some point. Western Park, I'm thinking. Yes. I'll take that one because I'm going to be leaving on vacation at okay. the end of the month, so I won't be back until October 14th. So it makes it easy to leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lori? Go ahead. Lori? So, what I was going to suggest Matt is maybe having like a rubric you know like mm -hmm. goes down that you know so as we go through the different parks we can check so we don't miss something yeah and you know just like comments at the end that would I think okay. that would be helpful for me I can do that yeah sure. Matt I'll take the Reeves Ferry one okay uh, Mackenzie. Matt I'll be happy to Twin Bridge <laughs> yeah <laughs> gee surprising how many how many of these parks do you have because now we've got three parks taken care of. actually so we've got three, three half, four five six more so okay I can do I because I live over there I can do veterans and Wasserman okay. of course you're at Wasserman too yeah so. well that's okay because again sometimes it's just fresh set of eyes you know uh, I could take uh, Tordoski field and Wa Watson Park Okay, and I'll send this out to. In, in, I can do Abby Griffin. Okay, and I can do something else if you need something else. Okay, I have Weston Park is Phil, Reeds Ferries Mackenzie, Twin Bridge is Rick, uh, Veterans and Wasserman is me, Twardowski Field is Heather. Yeah. Um, Are you do Watson Field? What was that? I can do Watson Field. Yep. Okay. Um, Bishop. Bishop. Yep. Bishop and then Wasserman, and I mean Wasserman can be multiple people anyway, because it's big. Yeah, I'll take Wasserman. Okay. <laughs> and then we just so just Bishop left, but I can also email whoever's not here. Maureen said Bishop. Oh, Maureen did. Okay. All right. And um, so I'll I'll make some sort of rubric to send out. I do not have seven parks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should be well. There was nine on the list, but. Yeah, but I only have I only have seven parks. I'm sorry, I, that's what I meant to say. I only have seven listed, so I'm missing something. Weston, Re oh Watson Park. Uh, Tether. Okay, I'm missing one more. Um, Lori, what did you say? Abby, Abby, Abby Griffin. Griffin. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Okay, and I'll send that out again. Like I said, um, so we're good there. All right. Perfect. All right, old business. Heather, would you like to go ahead and talk about the dog park? Maybe? I know I'm kind of cold calling you on that one. I don't, uh, there's not really much to say, just a typical, you know, pick up after your dogs. And um, I've been basically trying to fill in the holes that dogs have been digging. and. Now that it's been a little bit of cooler air, they're getting a more a little bit rambunctious. So, okay. But everybody will be excited for this new project. So, with the new project, what I was thinking was maybe we can try to put together a cleanup day, because if he's going to be putting this project up at the beginning of November, it would be nice if that we started out nice and clean. I had spoken with Matt earlier today because I went out to the dog park and. The grass is high. I mean, it grows inside and outside, and everybody's got a lot of busyness going on. So um, maybe we can try to, you know, plan a day, pick it, put it out there on the dog park, and see if we can get some people to come and help us out, and yeah. and um, maybe a couple of adults <laughs> over 18 <laughs> who could use weed whackers. Um, I'd love to bring my lawnmower in through the double gate. We'll yeah. talk about that. Yeah. And I did put in a request with Public Works after Trace and I spoke earlier about to see if we can bring in some equipment to, to knock it down. We did, we've gotten to it about once a month. I was telling Tracy, one of, our, my, one of my challenges this summer, which we talked about last meeting a little bit, was like the maintenance guy I had for the summer quit on me the third week of July. It took three weeks to get somebody new in place. 
He was only with us for two weeks before he went back to school. I have, I now have a one 15 hour a week person trying to maintain the entire park and all the buildings. And we're trying to also close up all the buildings before it gets too cold. And so we're just kind of stretched a little thin right now, um, among other things, which I'll talk about in a minute, but. So at this point in time for everyone watching from home, the dog park fund balance is at $497.34. We are obviously looking for donations, uh, some to help with the pet shelter for Peyton's project, but also donations because we will need to bring in another load of playground chips or something to help uh, fix it up. The, uh, the work that DPW did last year with the road and then putting up those rocks and everything else actually helped significantly with the water runoff. So that's a big help and, and it made it so that we didn't have to spend the cost, but it's about $1,000 every time we get decent sized shipment for uh, both the small and the large dog size. So donations are of course welcome. And then of course your pups get to come and play in the wood chips for a couple of days while it takes us to get them all spread out when we finally <laughs> get that done. Um, and there's also just a reminder on here that there is a website you can go out to, you can ask questions, you can send a private message and you will get a response from one of the people that helps run the dog park. It's Friends of the Merrimack Dog Park. It's just one single word and it'll be easy to find. It'll pop right up. Um, on Facebook. On Facebook. Did on I just say, I did, okay, probably didn't. Once again, scatterbrain for today. Um, and uh, at this point in time, we did have uh, some extra discussion about a conversation we had last at the last meeting with regards to um, someone wanting to bring dog treats to the dog park and, and the vote from the committee was to deny that request. Um, I do want to say that we're, we would welcome if uh, that particular requester, I'm not going to name names, especially since he's under 18, if that requester would like to reach out to me, he has my cell phone number, and uh, Rick and I would love to meet with him and discuss it with him and get a little bit more information and see if there's some kind of a compromise that we might be able to work out that um, fits with everybody's wishes. So I'm hoping that he's watching tonight and I'm hoping that he reaches out. Um, but otherwise, uh, the request is still denied <clears throat> pending further discussion. Uh, Matt, you're up. Director's report. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a week. Uh, I had hoped to announce tonight our new camp and after school program coordinator who was supposed to start on Monday. Um, unfortunately, that isn't happening. Um, now, we had gone through a pretty extensive interview process back in early August because Hannah was kind enough to give us two months' notice of leaving for the, for, um, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Air Force. Um, and so, you know, we'd gone through the interview process, the timing worked out, everything was set, this, this candidate was right online, was responding to everything all the way up through, had done all the HR paperwork. I get a text Sunday night at 10 o'clock. Um, I have COVID, I can't start tomorrow. Okay, disappointing, but it is what it is, you know. Um, and so, you know, and, and then it said, you know, let's touch base Monday morning. Oh, great, so I reach out Monday morning and I, she starts giving me this, like, um, like back and forth about, well, it might be weeks before I can start because I don't want to start until I'm test, you know, get a free clear test. And even though that's, well, you know, CDC guidance is basically 24 hours fever free and you're fine, you know. And, and then all of a sudden she changes her story and says, well, you know what, I've decided not to take the job. That was Monday morning when she was supposed to be already be here. So, yeah. Um, so we have... Um, we posted the job. We actually have gotten uh, five applications at the moment already since Monday, um, four of which we've reached out to interview for. And so hopefully by early next week, we'll like one of these candidates and, and, um, and we'll see. But the job is basically open until I find somebody we like that we feel comfortable with. 
Um, least to say Monday I was banging my head on the wall and, and shouting some things and, and just, it was not a good day Monday. Um, anyway, so in the meantime, um, after school is up and running and the rest of my staff has been great and stepped up and, and we're still kind of plugging away. We were worried originally like parents are going to panic on us and like, oh, Hannah's gone and you know, whatever. Um, cause Hannah's last day was today. Um, but so far, all good. Um, we've got 30 ki 33 kids in after school this year. Um, so we're averaging, not every kid is every day. We're, we're probably 22 to 25 kids a day, but last year we were like 15 or 20 a day. So we're definitely in much better shape than we were a year ago with after school. Um, and you know, we're just gonna have to kind of muddle through for, cause even if I find somebody tomorrow that I like, with the background checks and all that it takes, it's three, maybe even four weeks um, for the process to play itself out. So we're hoping for a speedy recovery, but if anybody's watching at home and has interest, the job is still open until I find somebody. So even, it's not a done deal, even if I've scheduled interviews, until I find somebody, I find somebody, you know, so we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's been, that's been my week. Um, and where are we? Uh, so next um, is the Park and Rec logo contest, which I officially pushed out there on social media last week. But the Park and Rec logo was, um, and I'm going to hand out this flyer, um, was handed out, was created, actually, you just pass them down. Um, when I first started here in 2014, like I was two months onto the job, there was no logo, like the camp shirts just literally was text saying Natacook Day Camp. That was the camp shirt. And the staff shirt was, and like, the town was using the town seal, but the town seal is like seven shades of blue, and so it's hard to reproduce, especially on screen printing. And, and, and so we came up with the logo that's at the top of the flyer here, kind of on a whim, because I needed something for summer to put on a shirt. And it's been 11 years, or nearly 11 years, because that's how long I've been here. And back then we were doing, you know, 20 programs a year. Um, now we're doing, this last year we did over 320 programs, events. You know, we're the fun people in town, but I don't think the logo really represents what we do. It's kind of generic and plain and, and whatever. Um, so what we're doing is to introduce this community logo design contest. We're looking for residents to create a design that they feel represents us, represents Parks and Rec and all the things that we do, which we will then use to put on websites, clothing, documents, social media, so forth. Um, I know in Londonderry they did this this past spring, both the Rec Department and their Senior Center did it. Um, and they had a good response and came up with a logo they were really happy with and, and so that kind of thing. So we're kind of following their model. Um, we are asking for submissions from the public by November 1st. And then this group here, when we meet, probably, I haven't decided yet if we're gonna to try to do it at the meeting or if I'll send it out electronically, probably electronically, and then we'll announce it at that November meeting. I, we'll see. Um, and then obviously, you know, we'll take the, 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 the conceptual design that they make and we will have to digitize it and all that so that we can reproduce it and, and all that kind of stuff. But winning entry obviously gets public recognition in print and social media, a $50 like Visa gift card, a $25 Parks and Rec gift certificate, and then obviously we'll, we'll print the shirt up with, their, with the new logo that they created on it. Um, so just kind of something fun and free, and, and so we're looking for help from you guys obviously to spread the word. Maybe some kids in the school that's a really good artist, could be adults, could be anybody. Um, hey Matt, I was just about to say, have you sent this over to, over to all of the schools so that I have the not kids yet. in the art classes? It's, it's on the list, okay. so um, like I said, it's been a week. <laughs> I think there'd be a lot of interest. Yeah. I, I agree. So that's what we're hoping for, and we hope we get some some good submissions to choose from. So, um, so we're we're giving people, you know, it's about six weeks to 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 work on it, and we're going to keep pushing it out in the next over that time, and and then, like I said, once we get closer to, I'll probably put them all in an online album and send you a link to 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 vote for your favorites kind of thing. So, um, and we'll go from there. So that's that on the contest. Um, three upcoming events. Um, I know there's only two on the agenda, but I forgot one that I shouldn't have. Uh, so coming up next Thursday, 
the September 26th is the um, official grand opening of the new Watson Park River Trail. This is the trail that connects Watson Park up along the river to Wildcat Falls. Um, so the ceremony is at 11 o'clock um, down at Watson Park. Um, I know I've already had some conversations with, uh, like Rotary talked about, we've had, it's been kind of a soft opening for a couple of weeks and so some residents have already been using it and there's some spots in the middle that like, which way do I go? And so I know Rotary has ex expressed some interest already in like some signage and things to help with that aspect of things, but um, that's still in the works for, for down the road. But like I said, this will be the kind of official ribbon coming. I think this project's been in the works for, I think, 10 years. Yeah. And, and it just was kind of delay after leg and historical studies and federal, because it was all federal money and, and whatever. So we're happy that it's finally gotten here. <laughs> the, the picture that I saw online looked really cool. It looks like there's under the uh, it underneath goes under the bridge. things and yeah. yeah, I mean it looks really cool. And yeah. I, I've talked to some people who have, have walked the trail. Yeah, and they've loved it. So, well, the thing that's weird too, it gets weird because it's like technically parks and rec jurisdiction ends at the end of the park. <laughs> Once you go under the bridge, that's technically conservation land. <laughs> up to so like we were getting a, we were getting a lot of calls about it and I was like well it's not technically mine but here's what I know you know but we're so we're trying to figure some of that pieces of it out too and then of course DPW is doing like the last minute maintenance and signage and so it's kind of a everybody's in charge <laughs> but we'll get there we'll figure it out uh, so that's next week on Thursday the 26th coming up on Saturday October 12th um, is the fifth annual Natacook Challenge 5K race. Um, this is something we started during COVID and it's going growing strong every year. Um, we're up to 105 runners, I think, at this point. We're shooting for 150. Um, and, uh, but nice, you know, it's a 5K obstacle course race, so there's things that are like climbing walls and tires to go through. And last year there was an obstacle where we had strung across stand up paddle boards across the waterfront and you had to get across the waterfront without getting wet and some did it but most didn't um and but we have some really cool race shirts we've got amazing medals um i don't have them they're not they're still being printed so i don't have them in stock to show them here tonight but um and we have a couple of sponsors uh jerica Maserol state farm as well as rocket health and fitness who is also, who is also doing some of providing one of the elements um the fitness course in, in the course of one of the activities that the runners will hit. Um, but I am looking for volunteers from 8 to 10.30 if anybody is around. That is Columbus Day weekend, um, and we realize that, but we we're trying to avoid other big races in the area, so it was where we ended up. Um, so if anybody's available, and you don't have to tell me now, but just I'll put it on email, but uh, if you're around, we could use the help. And it's basically like course monitors to make sure people are going the right way and handing out T-shirts and handing out medals and like, easy stuff. Um, the Matt, other event excuse coming me, one up. Second. Yes. What was the second sponsor? Uh, uh, I have Rocket Fitness. Rocket, Rocket Health, Health and, and Fitness and Jerica Maserol State Farm agent. I'll get the spelling from you later. Yes. Um, and then coming up a little over a month from now is the 32nd annual Halloween party on wow. Saturday, October 26th from 12 to 3. Um, we currently are up to 32 business and community groups providing free games and activities. Um, I know we have one, uh, actually I think we have two Merrimack-based nonprofits that are be selling food, but everything else is basically free. Um, we will have the, um, the costume contest for the various age groups. We've got, um, Rhythmic Revolutions is going to be doing a baton demonstration a couple of times. Not my daughter, different different team, but that's okay. Um, and then we are bringing back the second annual Pumpkin Race Car Derby yes. so down the hill. So, um, And registration is open for that, which is a free event. So um, lots going on with all of that, but that is all I have at the moment. Um, Matt, I'd be happy to help out with the costume contest again this year. And I know I did a nonchalant dance party last uh, year. You got so it. <laughs> if you want something like that, I'm happy to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So here's a question on the pumpkin race car derby. Yes. You had mentioned last year about possibly having a carving station to get ready for it beforehand. 
help people maybe create their pumpkin we've been trying to find somebody the person that i was hoping to do it has not gotten back to me so okay and then with everything else going on i have not had time to follow up to people did great bringing their own last year yeah we had 20 ready to go 20 21 entries i think last year so um and we've got three or four already so far this year so and we haven't really pushed the advertising yet but um I keep hoping, like, and then I've also, one of the challenges last year was people were having trouble finding the wheels. And so I've been yeah. trying to, like, scour the internet for wheels that are affordable that don't cost $40 a wheel or something, you know, because we had originally hoped to, like, push it down the sledding hill instead of down the road, and but you need bigger tires to do that, and the bigger tires are kind of expensive. So I'm not, I think we'll be back on the park road again this year, unfortunately, but we'll see. I keep looking. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go to organization reports. Rick, we'll start with you with MYA. Sure, thank you. Um, first off, currently in session are our sports of soccer, football, and cheerleading, um, and baseball and softball as well. And registration is currently open for lacrosse until October 1st, and basketball registration until September 30th. And for any parent out there that's looking for more information, our website is the Merrimack Youth Association.com. That's it for now. Thank you. All right, Maureen, you're up, Senior Citizens Club. No, I'm sitting down. Uh, <laughs> gee, Matt, I'm not going to make it to the Halloween party. Senior citizens have their craft fair that day, and I'm in charge of the bake table. <laughs> All right, we have a lot going on. Um, Tomorrow is tomorrow's Thursday already, right? Tomorrow we'll, there's two trips going on in the seniors. One are going to Newburyport to the Playhouse, and a couple of people like myself are going to Wyndham to Happy Together. It's a 60s show, so that should be fun. Um, we're having a fall fair raffle. Tickets will be sold at Shaw's on Saturday, also at Tractor Supply on Route 3. Sunday, they will be selling them at Shaw's again. And the Lions Club is giving the seniors a compliment, complimentary luncheon at John O'Leary Center. So, and we are planning that's, that's our two to four. Christmas dinner you can, you can use in people. December. Two to four of the luncheon. What? Luncheon is from two to four. We, could, we have open spaces for the luncheon. If I can't wants hear to. you. The Lions Club have open spaces for the luncheon oh, from well, two to four on the 21st. It. You can say it. I just tried to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can say All it. All the air of the TV land, it's going to be this Saturday from 2 to 4. Please sign up. Okay. Thank so, you. Are your openings for eating or are your openings for needing help? No, eating. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And that was, you said the 21st? Saturday. Okay. Perfect. And let's see. Next But you week. have to be over 65. <laughs> Well, I can drive by and wave. <laughs> uh, school board, Lori. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to direct everyone to the Merrimack District website that wanted to look at the strategic plan, which uh, Mackenzie actually served on that committee. Um, it's a really wonderful document. It, it has our mission statements and goals of the school district. Um, at the last school board meeting, meeting our assistant superintendent Amy Doyle introduced our new um, science curriculum for the middle school uh, safety training continues to be a focus of our district and all of our teachers and staff will be going through safety training throughout the year and finally the building and planning committee um, ruled recently that the blue and green buildings were not going to be acceptable to be rehabbed and we need to move forward with the building project. Okay. All right. Um, looks like uh, Matt's not here tonight. He is our student rep. Mackenzie for town council. Um, and before I get to town council, I'm currently the acting chair also of the school district budget committee. So okay. um, we just planned a meeting for October 15th. It's a Tuesday night. Um, so that is about to be back up and running for the school year. Um, but to get to town council, um, we had a proclamation at our last meeting last week. The 
fire department has been in service for 100 years. Um, so they will be holding events throughout the month. Um, I don't think they have anything currently planned, but I think they're trying to work on it. Um, so that's an update. And then we also accepted a um, uh, bench donation um, from the Hospice House in Merrimack. That will be put in the garden that is in the Watson Park. Um, so the bench looks like it's in good shape. They looked at the wood and everything. Um, the wood will need to be painted and rehabbed a little bit, but it's not something that if people would sit on the bench that that would cause any of like the splinters or anything. So um, we did look at the bench before we accepted it, but um, we're very excited about that. We're going to pin down the bench so people, a person can go and put the bench in their trunk. <laughs> um, but so uh, we think that will be a great addition um, so people can sit and actually enjoy the garden. Um, and then... Um, we're also looking for people to uh, to be the ballot inspectors at the November 5th election. So um, it is a paid gig. So if anyone's interested, just contact the town clerk's office. Um, we would love to have you. Uh, this past election went really, really well. Um, and we thank everyone that came out to vote um, and that was there to help throughout the day. So it went very smoothly. Okay. Mackenzie, excuse me. Yeah. Um, does the ballot inspector... Um, like have shifts they don't have to be there all day or um i think they do have shifts oh. um i would definitely encourage to contact the town clerk for more information okay. but i think they can go in shifts thank you i think in the past oh. what they've done is they've set up shifts for um a morning there's like a four hour five yeah hour there's shift. generally like a morning and an afternoon and session. an afternoon and in in some cases depending upon the type of work that you're doing you're not even allowed to stay for the full day oh town council is required to stay <laughs> actually we only have to do half a day now so that's exciting <gasps> okay <laughs> okay well lucky you all right um okay so we have one thing that we have to fix from last time it was brought to my attention after we had done uh the meeting in august that there was a mistake on the meeting minutes from june 19th of 2014 and it was something it was just something really small and we didn't figure it out until after the meeting was over so just to keep everything nice and clean i thought we would go through it just talk about it real quick and then make a final vote again that to accept the minutes so the issue was <clears throat> under the town council mention for the organizational reports it talked about <coughs> i apologize um, talking about retaining staff and staying within the budget and um, stated that Barbara Healy had resigned interviewing and took place and the minutes actually said Jen Jordan was selected as a new town council member and that should have been Jennifer Jobin so it was just a it was a typo we apologize uh, Ms. Jobin if you're watching um, but I just it's everything nothing else changes so uh can i have a motion to accept the corrected minutes for june's i'll make the motion thank I'll you second josh it. okay all in favor okay. well of who was there oh. so yeah june um phil you've already you yeah let's see um phil was not here maureen was not here in june Naomi wasn't here in June, but I don't know if you were here in I June. Was here. Uh, in June. I think so. Uh, I don't think so. No, okay, July. Okay. We didn't have one in July. You were here in August. Yeah. Uh, then I, I think I was here in June because I, I came twice. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Matt a quick question here. We've, re we've already approved the minutes themselves. What we're approving is a correction of the minutes. I still think it needs to be whoever attended the meeting in June because those are the minutes that we corrected and Probably, are approving. Yeah. Okay. All I right. think Lori was here. Yes. I okay. came twice. This is my third time. All right. Let's have a vote again then. Um, who did we have? I'm sorry. I've got, I'm sitting here doing this thing first. Okay. I've got Josh made the first. Who seconded? Lori. Okay. Good. All right. And um, all in favor? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. So we'll do six, oh, and two. All right. Um, and now excuse me, Miss Casparius. Do you, do you have any comments that you'd like? Do you have anything that you would like us to, um, you know, make better? 
Okay. We, we need to have okay. treats. Hey, That's Tracy. what she should be saying. We should bring cookies. Can we go back to the notes for a minute? Um, <laughs> under the notes uh, on the last page of the August. Mm, well, we, or we, you um, have her last name spelled J-U-B-I-N. It's J-O-B-I-N. <laughs> okay. You're getting a little technical there. Sorry. I know. And okay. Tracy, we actually have to approve the August minutes anyway. Because we didn't do well, that fine. yet. Well, fine. Okay. Approve with corrections, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to that point here. Find my minutes. Where'd my minutes go? Oh, here they are. Thank you. You're welcome. All Sorry. Right, so <laughs> we fixed the June minutes, and actually I did that on purpose. We're doing it chronologically. All right, so uh, let's see. We have the August minutes. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at them? Mackenzie has noted one change. Which on the last page, Tracy, um, it says important immediately after the meeting ended, Mackenzie Murphy, town council, blah, 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 blah. Oh, under okay. the town council report, under retained staff and stay within the budget. Um, you have her last name spelled J-U-B-I-N, and it's J-O-B-I-N. Okay, that has been changed with that correction. Uh, do we have any other corrections or any other changes? Okay, do we have a motion to accept the minutes? And I'll make a second, oh, unless Josh wants to. Okay. <laughs> Who's seconding? I did. Okay. Don't confuse me, guys. Or he had his hand up. <laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor? For those who are here. That <laughs> was all of us except for Heather. You weren't here for August. Nope. nope. Okay, all in favor? Three, so we're seven and one. All right, perfect. Um, any other comments from the committee? Okay. Did I miss anything else, guys? <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Oh, seriously? <laughs> I'll make a second. <laughs> okay, the meeting, uh, do we have a vote to adjourn the meeting at 7.57 on the dot. All right, that would be 8.00. Thank you very much, and thank you all for joining us tonight.